What is up? Audubon Dan here. This tool shed disaster has been just, just outrageous. It's been sitting like this for months. I've been without a tool shed and a garage for seven months now. And I'm not allowed to work on this thing. Let me uh, tell you a little story about it. Okay, so here we are. This is what it looked like before. You've probably seen some posts on my Instagram of me uh, working on it and what the extent of the damage is. And uh, you've probably seen some posts of me ranting about it. It's uh, all started with uh, just this nasty moldy smell from uh, this broken roof right here. And uh, road is starting to get in here and started to mess things up. Once the water gets in there, it gets real funky inside. All the uh, walls were basically uh, held by termites holding hands. And uh, just the construction of this thing, you can see it's, it's like all put together by the old houses that were there. And uh, so I slowly uh, did one wall at a time. And uh, before I, uh, before I started tearing everything apart, I just I tried every option. I tried calling contractors; they wouldn't call me back. Uh, one guy wanted twenty grand just for a slab, and then uh, tear the whole thing down, which is uh, not the way to go because uh, this is a historic district. You got uh, some historic homes, like you see in the background, that uh, that, that make it make it uh, impossible for you to even tear anything down. So um, I did a lot of research on this. Um, so it, if you tear it down, then you have to have a carport. And if you have a carport, it has to be uh, with setback laws. And if you tear it down completely also, you have to be comply with setback laws. So that's another reason why I chose just to tear one wall at a time and um, just go from there. It's, I tried every single option, did a whole bunch of research and just decided to do it myself. As you can see, the right side of the wall sits on a property line and also the back too. The back uh, is the property line and uh, there was no fence there, so I had to put a fence. So it's basically two property lines on the back corners. Uh, the historic district uh, committee and everything make you make it really hard to, to do anything here on here. You just basically got to either deal with it or spend money and the way things going here in the silicon valley like everybody's moving in got million dollar homes just popping up out of nowhere which were never million dollars people are coming in well a lot of people are selling out leaving the area and then the these millionaires coming in buying these houses for 1.4 freaking 2 million it's going up to almost 3 million now in this exact neighborhood it's insane so every contractor is just tied up and if you don't got no money they, they don't want to talk to you so that's another reason why I was just forced to do it myself also I was hoping to fly underneath the radar because uh, the planning department the building department's busy as hell and got all these code enforcers uh, running around inspecting uh, all these projects so hey why not take advantage of the time you know right it's a uh, full-blown every seems like Every block has at least one house that's being remodeled completely because uh, these mini mansions aren't good enough for the people to move in. So, uh, yeah, talked to all the neighbors, went to one neighbor one by one, uh, enticed the neighbors next to me with the nice fence, this beautiful fence I put in. They didn't want to pay for a fence at the moment because uh, they were tied up in a project inside their kitchen or something. So I, I offered them to put a fence in, be nice. Uh, it was nice to the back neighbors, I offered them to put a fence in, because there was just a gap of no fence behind the garage. Just the whole fence line run through the whole, both properties, but um, just behind the garage is just a gap of no fence. So I gave them a fence. They're happy, they're still happy now. They're, they're all good. But uh, just started uh, building one wall at a time and uh, started working on roof and uh, go around here you can see that uh, the ridge sticks out on the on the right side over the 
fence line here and they started complaining about this ridge and uh, see the property line runs alongside of it and the guys worried about uh, drainage and everything they started complaining inch by inch and got to the point where they got the neighbor across the street which is mr. save the day contractor and uh, he drew a line on their property and started schooling me measuring every six feet or so showing that the property line is not straight and the garage goes right into their side so then I just I flipped out I I totally flipped out and told them you guys want to be neighbors like this then fine I'll I'll play the game and stop talking to them there so uh, started uh, drawing up plans and going to the city and city said uh, well two months went by so uh, the city uh, like went, went ahead with the, the way I was doing it one wall at a time they stamped my uh, my plans and I started working on a weekend and all of a sudden four days later getting two inspectors showing at the door and and tagging me it's, I knew it was the neighbors because they heard me starting to work on it again and it's uh, ridiculous. If it wasn't for the prick neighbor, everything would have been fine. I would have been done by now. But now I'm forced to hire a land surveyor for over two grand to figure out that finally he, he, he this guy at work wonders, he, he went down all the way down the street and went one way and went all the way the other way to, to squeeze in that property line on the side of the garage because yeah, that thing is like inches off and it went in just a little bit of hair on their side, but he, he worked miracle. That guy is awesome. But yeah, it's, that's why he gets paid the big bucks. Now uh, this week, I just hired an architect for $3,500. So about close to $6,000 already now on top of what the shed already cost me and the fence already cost me. That uh, finally, hopefully by the end of the week or next week, I'm able to move on. This thing is just ridiculous. So here's how you get into the dang thing. There's a part of my roof going right there. Let me show you inside. Part of the mess. Uh, kind of got everything cluttered right here because it's got to sit under this tarp. It's the only shelter I got right here. And uh, did radiant bear the whole way. I'm gonna do it on the roof too. A little overkill but whatever <laughs> um, the only thing original is this uh, cement floor right here and I had to dig a hole and do the foundation all the way around that was all dirt all each part of the foundation was all dirt and just worked off of there leveled it all out gonna probably make this my uh, tool bench area this whole wall right here and uh, hopefully uh, review some tools so here it is this is how it's sitting right now it's so hard working on concrete too my my wrists are still hurting from it and did all this hard work just to get slapped in the face that's just that's just BS hope to get more videos going on tool reviews construction wise and my experience with construction and uh stay tuned for more thank you for watching